Now, how are these triple one one threes going to perform, Daki? It has to be an aggressive play here coming off from Kazna Crew because longer period of time against a Lorraine Orti, they will not withstand. And you can see so far, most of them driving towards the middle. I do not expect them to stay around it. I really don't think they can last in the middle. It has to be aggressive, take the E4 position, for example, and play from there on. But then again, they are kind of lacking on Bajat here. I think Utopia, if they set up in a solid crossfire position, should be able to withstand any possible counter -coach. Hyper aggressive spotting here from Hyba. He's already gone past. FC Dynamo's going to come off reload and chase him down. The rest of the guns from Utopia are going to be able to shoot at him as well in just a second. Looks like he's trying to get a quick spot onto Papa Pavin, but he's down in that area. Anyone who peeks to get Hyba could be potentially exposed to the rest of the guns from Kazna Crew. FC Dynamo is the one that's furthest forward on his own. He's getting focused now as Vetso pushes over on his own into a crossfire. Vetso is sacrificing his HP, but the first kill goes to Kazna Crew, but they get a return on Utopia. Utopia down one tank, Kazna Crew down two tanks. This is going to be a field day for the STRV. He's on long distance, it's going to be hard to penetrate him. Papa Pavir might go down here, but it doesn't matter at that point if the STRV can push out the damage. One more shot maybe from Papa, because there seems to be on reload. And the STRV will still be free farming this entire time. It's not going to work out for Kazna Crew, I Papa think. Papa Pavir's going to hit and hope right now for theirs. He's gone blind, he's shot. Does he connect? No. no. But Utopia have weathered this massive bouncer on front armor of Kalmy Piotr. Kazna crew have lost Vetso and lost Hyba. They've lost a the scout. They've lost one of their main blockers. Diplomat now taking damage in his 113 straight there to the face. Mukka at the back is going to farm a lot of damage. Maraka in his cram wagon has got a damaged gunner. The thing is about this position here as well of the STRV, because it's so low, he can lift his tank up in the air, just heat shield against the 113s, and they won't be able to penetrate because it's unpenetrable for heat sh ammunition. And Kazlaku went super aggressive as expected, and even with Dynamo making a mistake, yeah, he's on our team, Ryan. That's yep, indeed he's correct. in all three of our teams, FC with Dynamo. E but even with Dynamo making a mistake, still, Kaz I mean, Utopia, hold on. Does he get anything for assist damage? No idea. No idea Hopefully. how the points work. Colossoid now being focused fired right now, Daki. That's not good for you. As Stefan's clipping into him. You have Stefan in your team as well, so this must be a bit um, <laughs> bittersweet for you. <laughs> I don't know what to think of that. <laughs> I'm so like, confused. yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. There's this now trying to snipe onto the SDRV, and if you Connect. hit the side of it, then you will obviously penetrate. It's like auto pen. There's, does he have more? Bihu, what a champion, going in there to block the shots and getting shots into Kalmy Piotr, who's going down. Utopia taking a lot of damage now, right now, Daki. They need to start picking up kills and finishing them off. Same with Kazna crew. I don't know how they're falling to pieces right now. Maraka really needs to finish Piotr here. They don't have, well, they do actually have the RT left standing. Diplomat gets Amorak in his 113 as well. A shot from Piotr not connecting. Stefan now trying to clip in the middle and. He's bouncing a lot of shots here against Marakar. Stefan overexposed here. The S-Tank can just farm damage into Stefan. He's getting shots back into Marakar, but it is Rules and the Grill who gets the kill on Stefan. Papa Pound still able to drop shots onto someone. Marakar's in a crossfire here between Nexus and Kalmy Piotr. He wants to get that kill into Kalmy Piotr, but he's on a reload. Bold plays here from Marakar. He's had a damage, a dead gunner for a very long time, and it's still right to the wire here, Daki. He needs to be careful because I think Nexus might try and make a play onto that Kran wagon if he can. Rulezic needs to move at this point and Durs is actually pushing forwards, possibly trying to go spot out the STRV, maybe the RD. Let's see if Papa Pavin can shotgun him from close range though. I think Papa Pavin is uh, not going to be able to do this. He's not aiming at Dares. He doesn't see it coming. He does see him now. Shoots, misses. Dares gets the kill on Papa Pau, and he's going to be able to come around into Mukha as well. This looks like it might be the play that turns the battle in Kazna's favour, although Mukha does get a connection onto Dares. There's a high roll there at 440. Does Rulazek have any kind of covering shot across into Mukha? It doesn't look likely. Well, Mukha connects onto Nexus. Nexus picks him up to end four one shots here for Kazna crew. Three now, and this is not over just yet. Maraca. Can you pull it out of the bag here, mate? You've got three shots and there's three targets. Well, Diplomat's keeping him pinned in, though, from another side. I think Rulezic is pinned in his position as well, because if he moves, he's going to get spotted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could say he's pinned. <laughs> Rulezic could go for Diplomat or Comet. Whoever Rulezic shoots at, he's going to get shot at back in return. Yeah, but if Rulezic kills somebody now, he will 100% be spotted. He needs to kill Diplomat, and then Maraca can go and call me Piotr and Dares. Maraca. 
can't kill Piotr right now because of the slope he's on. I don't know how Utopia even got into I don't this think situation. Utopia, I don't think Utopia can get out of this. What, it, what Rulezi could possibly do is get onto that K7 mountain over there. There's a little, well, mountain, it's a little bit of a hill you can climb in pretty much any tank. If he gets high enough, he might be able to, for example, put an HE shell onto the top of the turret, even a heat shell, but I think he's abandoning that plan right now. This is a great play from Ders to come all the way around, but... Maraca has spotted Realizix up on the rail tracks now. Is he going to continue to go? He's going all the way around into the middle, Daki. Is he? I mean, the gorilla is a fast tank. Is this the right play? Questionable. Really questionable because the Batcha will probably outspot him at any given time. He needs to catch Durs somewhere in the open and connect the shot without taking too much in return. So, I don't know. Realizix is going all the way. He can't start the cap because that would give away so much information. If he starts the cap, Maraca will get uh, peeked on from two sides and killed. Him and Ders are going to glide into each other right now. That is in favor of Rulezic because he can just peek and kill Ders. Is Ders going to go all the way over though? Is Ders going to go full speed? If Ders goes all the way over, he's dead. Oh my god. Ders. Ders is dead. Rulezic. Misses. Ders misses. Rulezic. Luck was on your side there, mate. They're going to try and double peek Maraca right now they because need, they have yep. to. They need to get a double kill Maraca. Can Maraca get a shot out and get a kill on someone? Realize it needs to get a kill on Diplomat. Diplomat <laughs> misses. Maraca takes a shot. He's going to try and turn to go the other way for Comey Potter. Should stay focused on Diplomat. Diplomat, can he get shot out by Realize Looks like Realize doesn't have the shot. HE again coming from Comey Potter. Poor Maraca, doesn't matter which way he turns. If he turns left or right, the other one's just going to peek and shoot him. Looks like he's committed to go for Comey Potter. Realistic doesn't have the shot on Diplomat. Piotr's just shooting HP because he can't or doesn't want to peek against the uh, the Kranwagen. He doesn't want to peek against it because then he will be penned because of the terrible gun depression, really, for the 113. And now Diplomat's realized he has to back off because Realistic could come in and hit him from the rear. But if Realistic is quick, if Realistic is quick, he can get towards the ball area and kill Piotr. No, Maraca! Maraca with the play getting the kill onto Comi Piotr. Now it's only Diplomat left against two tanks. Realistic has HP to trade. Looks like he might finish off Diplomat, which he does. Great counter play there, Realistic carrying his what, team there. What a round. What a weird round. How did this even get so close? Utopia was miles, miles ahead of Kazna. Like they had this entire round. What is Colossoy doing on his own on the eastern side of the map? We shall never know. That is a what the. Tune in next week on the Twilight Zone. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, what is he doing there? Got completely outplayed by Stefan. And then Muka was doing great in the SDRV, but Piotr surviving that long. Bihu the, shots, trying... the shots from Dares into Muka as well was really Bihu, well done. Bihu trying to shield the SDRV it was almost better to just ditch the SDRV at that point. Go around, like go around, and then come behind Piotr, kill him, because uh, nobody's going to be able to peek on him. And you have Rulez against the port, but the result some, is the same. Some really high damage being done in this round, Daki. So let's have a look at the stats here and see where it all came from. Top damage there actually Muka in the S tank, Nexus second in the STB, and then Maraca for me coming third place. Nicely done. Everybody has his day. Stefan there in the batch had also nice. But he also made a mistake. He drove over the middle to try and kill the Kranwagen, and he didn't. He didn't. He threw away all his HP there. So one of my players trading with the other for the other player then <laughs> to go die in the middle feels really, really great, man. It's like, just horrible. You like, give each other a shot at least or something, you know? Trade trade damage. Um, Vetso and Haiba. First two guys dead. Rip. Well, we, I did say that Mukai and the SRV would have pretty much free farm, and he did. I mean, Hyper Hyper rushed and spotted. Vessel rushed in the middle, took one shot, and it didn't really get anything in return for, for the push the Vessel did. Um, Dynamo, uh, the great balancer here for me, you and Mojo, 10th uh, place there, but ninth place was Colossoid as well, so... Um, but I don't want to talk about it. Let's just focus on the next round of Prokhorovka between these two. Fantasy does not matter anymore. Who cares, man? Free gold for everybody. It's Christmas. Uh, second round of Prokhorovka coming in. Let's have a look at the lineups. We're going to have them ready just a second for round two here on Prokhorovka. It looks like Saltilzor is not too happy about how things are going at the moment. But Salt. two two S tanks and that a grill and an Udi's Daki. Utopia hyper defense. This is not the salt you are looking for. 
This is not the salt you are looking for. So Utopia with double SDRV and Udes. Udes to be used as a tier 8 spotter instead of the RU251 probably being put in the bushes ahead of them. Great camo value can do a lot of damage as well if left unchecked. Double SDRV. Three batches as Kasna crew now, are going to go east side, I think. I was going to say, with this lineup, are Kasna crew just going to look at it and say, right, okay, we're yeah, going to go the to thing the thing is, side. The thing is, I think maybe one of the SDRVs will be like A0. Honestly, I think... I mean, this is, I've never seen a team lineup so defensive like this with four TDs like I that. I think uh, one of the SDRVs might be A0, honestly. Or the Gorilla. No, I think the SDRV might be A0 to block off that cap as well. Quick relocation coming out, maybe, from Utopia Boys. I mean, the two S-Tanks and Udes as well is a lot of eggs in one basket there from Utopia. There's obviously a, a strong tactic here, a very different and unusual lineup to what we're used to here on Prokhorovka. Um, we'll know in just a second or a couple of minutes how that's going to work for the teams. Um, I don't know, I'm interested to see this one. It's going to be hyper-defensive, hyper-campy. They're going to rush. They're going to rush? No, they're not. I wouldn't be you surprised. You me? You troll yourself on a daily basis, but um, I think one of the SDRV is probably an A0. Udes spotting ahead where you can see the RU spot. Other SDRV in A1. Then the Gorilla somewhere hovering in between. And then we'll have to see what they do with the rest, because they have no tanks that can play the middle, so it, it's kind of weird. Like, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. If these heavies get in the open, they're dead. It's, it's going to be interesting. Now, I was going to ask as well, um, Kormi Piotr seems to make a um, first team place now for Kasnikar. I wouldn't have expected that, really, to be honest. But Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, he's been playing okay so far. Let's see if it continues throughout the season. Okay, let's jump into round two here on Prokhorovka and see exactly how this hyper campy defensive lineup from Utopia is going to play. Well, Kas what a surprise from Kasna. Kasna crew going to the right side as you predicted, Daki. They are attacking red team here and Utopia defending on blue team. Oh, look where one of the SDRVs is going. That is a little bit obvious that... You're a wizard, Dekelzor. You're a wizard, Barry. But uh, you don't have to be a wizard to figure this one out. Uh, he's not going. Is he going all the way to A0? Probably not because they have a batch of aggressive spotting in front of him. So... They won't, but let's see, because Kasna Crew is not about to stop Haiba going straight in. Haiba pushing forward here, spots out. Muka spotted. Bihu. How much damage can Bihu take in return here? Muka getting wrecked in that S tank, not getting the same play as he had in the previous round. He has no cover whatsoever. He's trying to rely on the armor and the angle of his tank, and that is not happening as Haiba picks up the kill, and that is a throwaway kill there from Utopia. Shoku in the next one being focused down already on half health in his batch up. I think this round is already over for Utopia here. Bihu is stuck in that area. Unless they can kill something right now, it's not looking that good because Bihu will get pushed on now. Bihu now getting shot at. He's stuck down in the river here in the northeast of the map. FC Dynamo, the only other potential player who can give him some covering fire. But Kasna crew are doing the right thing and going aggressive here. They are the attacking team, and if Utopia are going to try and camp and they don't have the positions to start with, Kasna crew can take quite a strong advantage here. Bihu needs to just do as much damage as he possibly can at this point. It's the only option. It won't help much, though. I don't know why Pilter is firing heat. There's okay. picking up the kill on Bihu. So Utopia down two tanks already within the first two minutes. Two tier 10s, an S tank and a batch at 25. And it looks like their plans have just gone right out the window as Kasna crew now have a commanding position over base two. I mean, there was no real surprises here coming out from both these teams, the way they played it. I mean, the lineups were for from Utopia, but the way they played out wasn't Kasna crew going east, super aggressive, not stopping, spotting out the STRV. He'd almost be better off just stopping an A9 because, I mean, it's kind of obvious Kazna Cruz is just going to rush the East because it's their only play. They can't go on two line. So, not sure what Utopia was thinking there. And this round, it's, it's, it's over. You see Kazna Crew in full control. This is what I was talking about earlier on when the teams spawn north and south. So, Utopia actually spawned north, but they're now on the left side of the map. Kasna crew spawned south, but they're now on the right side of the map, on the east side of the map, and the fight now changes from left to right rather than up and down. Rulezik coming towards the rails with his SDRV. Not an ideal position to be between two heavy tanks. Yeah. Yep. 
a bold tactic. He's sieging up. There we go. He's now in siege mode. <laughs> <laughs> Boing! Massive bounce there off the front of the armor from the diplomat. But the minute he goes forward, Vets was just going to shoot him inside. Just like that. Now the bounce from Diplomat doesn't seem like he knows the SDRV weak spots just uh, Crossfire there though from Dares and Nexus and also Vetso can get free damage into him. Realistic, that was um, a bold tactic to go head on but when you have Crossfire like that, I mean look at look at the the angle of that tank with the siege mode, it's insane. Shoku getting wrecked as well as he tries to peek. There's a push going over the other side. Shoku gets dropped. Realistic finally gets dropped to his STV. FC Dynamo gets dropped now. Utopia down to two tanks. This is done and dusty. It's going to be Kazna crew taking this round and it's going to be 1-1 one, one here on Prokhorovka. Yeah, 1-1 one, one indeed. Colossoid, one more shot of damage perhaps? Nope. Nope. Papa Pavi on the last one standing. He's like, you can get me but not alive. Five seconds left on the cap. <laughs> Papa Pavi's not going to reveal himself. There we go, it's capped. Haiba picking up those cap points. If you have them in your fancy team, great. Good for you. Have fun with them. Uh, um <laughs> <laughs> salt. <laughs> Not even salty, honestly. Uh, I'd be salty. If I had Colazoid or FC Dynamo. FC Dynamo has, has been a great rebalancer right now. Um, yeah, it's not going too great. We'll see about that Colazoid and FC Dynamo the comment you made. Um, Maraca as well. It wasn't a, it wasn't a good round for Utopia. No, I mean, Kaz not doing the obvious thing, going very aggressive in the east, even hyper aggressive. High boss spotting out the SCRV. The SCRV is like, rip. Should have stayed in A8, A9 in case this aggression comes out, which he didn't. And the result was obvious. Yep, let's have a look at the stats and see where all the damage came from in Kazna crew this time round. Vetso actually coming top damage there. Diplomat, Stefan, Nexus, Ders. Top five all coming out of Kazna crew. Yep, yep, indeed. That is uh, interesting. I'm just quickly checking. Okay, I have Stefan, so Stefan did okay. Okay, that's uh, Dynamo and Colosoid as well. Yeah, but you know, Dynamo and Colosoid. What did you say about them again? Because they're on, the on only the ones. Page, they're, they're the only they're ones from Utopia <laughs> to do anything. <laughs> yep, they're the only ones that came out and did something there. Look so. at this. See, it was working out for me. The only one I had is, is Maraca, and he wasn't playing in this round. So. Oh, great, great stuff. I mean, if you had Muka, you'd be really happy with how he did in the first round, and in the second round, he got annihilated. Well, he's so. still on 2k average, so... And I didn't take Shoku this time round. I would tried to use him last season, and it didn't work out quite well for me. No, Mo um, Muravanka. Mo Mojo does have Bihu, though. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> <laughs> Mojo always gets the pick on someone oh. who just doesn't quite perform for him. Oh. Um, I mean, I feel bad because you also picked Meiland as you did, and Meiland's not been playing with Oops, but he should probably be in the lineup tomorrow. Um, next map now, Daki, we're going to go into Steps. Big open map, important climbs. Steps. Muravanka. Muravanka. I'm looking at completely the wrong lineup here. <laughs> it's uh, Broko, Muro, Himmelsdorf, and Ruhmberg. Uh, yeah, Muravanka now. Yeah. Um, Camp Central. Potentially, but Muravanka's actually been quite maps recently, quick maps. I thought you wanted to talk about Steps. Steps is um, <laughs> for a different time. Steps is a tiebreaker, we'll talk about that when it comes. When? When? when comes. You have very much faith in both these teams. But yeah, Muravanka, although I don't think it will be super sle super, sl super sleepy. <laughs> super sleepy between these two indeed, because camping puts you to sleep. But uh, yeah, I don't think it'll be super slow between these two. I think both Utopia and Kazna have the ability to go aggressive or to try and make some surprises. We've seen Kazna actually go aggressive in the past. So perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Indeed. Let's have a look at the lineups, Daki. See if there's any surprises or unusual picks, hopefully. Mouse? Mm. Oh. Not really. Oh, not super surprising. We kind of know what that's going to be doing. Yeah, we've seen that. It's like Rage Quit. If they put it there, which is most likely, obviously, Mouse is used to put in the cap or to shield from shots coming in from the forest. Only Bacha's behind that, so interesting to see. You know what also can be done with the Mouse, Ryan? Obviously, they can drive him to the tree line, you know, where the E5 plays on the ridge to possibly blind shoot the cap. Well, let's find out if you're right with the tactics, Daki. It's all square here as we go into Muravanka. 
Muravanka, a map with a great number of buildings, bushes and trees, amongst which teams hide for most of the battle. The attacking team begins the battle from the top of the village and the defenders start from the bottom of the map. Both bases are better controlled from the hill near the first base and from the green in the lower left corner of the map. There are many attack directions. The attacking team often attempts to gain the attention of defenders by putting pressure on the first base, whilst manoeuvring several tanks behind the second base to deliver fire into the defending's flank. Team setups are very diverse, but the players often choose the fastest tanks, even for heavy setups. They could even bring SPGs. They can even bring SPGs. Pop Powen, not on one this time round. Utopia and their fancy blue camouflage. On the blue side, attacking into Kasna crew on the red side, defending. This Utopia camo seems very reminiscent of the digital camo. It is a digital camo, Ducky, that's why. It's a blue digital camo. That's what it's referencing to. <laughs> It's, uh, it's very like the Chinese uh, digital camo they have on actual real-life tanks, which is quite cool. But? It's nice. It's different from the rest of the ones. I always think that um, uh, Dings is the, the kind of strangest with just the black lines drawn on white. We'll have to see where the... Um, I see... <sighs> Are they going to... I hope they're just going to put the mouse with G G4, but because they picked double S tank, I'm like not sure whether they'd be like risky enough to like go drive with the mouse all the way towards like the 39 batch shot to spot him. Realistic, so already taking a shot on his batch shot. He's at the. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. C4 right now. But Maraca will probably move towards the three line to play on that hill over there. Possibly trying to spot out one of the. Well, not trying to spot out, trying to shoot. Blind shoot, take damage. Well, the rest of his team either starts trying to clear the bushes, or... Two shots out from Stefan, two bounces, and he's now in a reload. Yeah, Mraker has a nice angle. Piotr won't be able to pen him, neither will Stefan. So, good stuff there from Mraker. He can now start blind firing the bushes, but it seems like the rest of his team is relocating back towards the number one base. Mraker has already bounced four shots there. Two from the TVP, two from the bat chat. Interesting to see. Need to figure out what these bat shots are doing. I don't know. Like, they know they can't really go 1 2 line because of the amount of bat shots that um, Kasna showed there. They showed Nexus, they showed Durs, there's a Granwagen and Emil 2. I really think going 1 2 line might be suicidal even. Bihu is going down the bottom line, but there is a bit of movement in Kasna who are redlining at the bottom of the map there with three tanks. Now, Colzoid and Dynamo are going around the top of the map. You see Hyba, Kami, Piotr, and Stefan as a triple shot there from Vetzel and Emil connects into Maraca. Maraca did initially have 3k HP. He's down to 1747, so it's three shots he took there from the Cranwagon. From the Emil, too, even. Yeah, sorry, my bad. So, good stuff there. Perhaps Dynamo here wants to shoot onto the side of the Emil, too, but they have already traded a lot of HP. I'm not sure if I like this play a lot. Let's see if Vesto gets greedy and tries to shoot Maracar again, because I think they will try to punish this time. I think he's going to come off reload and just go for it if he's sitting there. Diplomat's doing the proxy spotting for him. Well, and indeed, there's the shots coming out from Vesto and Diplomat. Maracar needs to try and do a bit more angling. Diplomat now has shots into him. Vesto now gets shots into him, and then Stefan has a clean shot on the side armor as the rest of the tanks from Utopia try and push in. Trying to catch out um, Vetso or um, Diplomat on a reload, but no, Muka and Dynamo are taking a lot of damage here as they push forward. Crossfire here from Dares, so trying to get a drop onto him, trying to get a tank back for the tank that they've lost, and they do. Dares and Kasna crew drops, but in return, Utopia are losing another tank here in FC Dynamo. Well, they need to kill this Kranwagen as well to make this a worthwhile trade, and I don't think they've done just enough. Maybe if they get the Kranwagen, but even after that, look how much HP they've lost. Cranwagon goes down, Papa Palvin getting the kill on Diplomat, but now you see the other tanks of Kasna crew coming in and Utopia are on the ropes here, Haiba getting the kill onto Ubiku, Kami Piotr getting a shot into Muka. Utopia are going to have to run here, they don't have the damage and two of their tanks are on reload, Muka has only two shots and Kami Piotr should be able to finish him off. I'm so confused by what's happening. Stefan actually gets the kill on Rulazek. Papa Powen running, but Stefan now gets the kill on Muka as well. Only two tanks left here for Utopia against five guns of Kasna crew. And this is going to be Kasna crew picking up this round here, Daki. First round here, Muravanka. 
That was nonsense, honestly. Like, experimenting is fine, that's nonsense. Especially against uh, the lineup that Gazna crew brought with all, with pre, with all auto loaders, actually, excuse me. Just you lost for what you work mean, it. aren't you? Because it's really, like, there's a lot of terms to describe it, of which none is PG-13 <laughs> enough. Um, that's, like, really stupid, honestly. That's, like, okay, I understand you push in Marakar to take the shots from the Kranwagen and the Emil, but my friend, they have TVP, two bad shots. Actually, they have more than two bad shots. So they had Kranwagen, Emil 2, then they had a Tier 9 bad shot, they had one TVP and four more bad shots. Do you think if Marakar takes some shots from an Emil and a Kranwagen, that's seven, right? Did I miscount? <laughs> Wait, Kranwagen, <laughs> Emil, G9 Bat, TVP. We'll have to look afterwards. <laughs> I just can't count you, you anymore. Got, you got me completely confused. Here. I'm confused. You, you rattled off four tanks, then you said four bat chats. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, let's have a look at the stat stack here. It'll be okay, helpful. Okay, so and I was right a the picture. first time when I said three bat chats. Yeah. Uh -huh. But so they have the Kranwagen, the Emil, three bat chats, the. TVP and the tier 9 bad. And even with, with like. I just don't Stefan, know, five I just, kills, I don't understand. nearly 4k damage. I don't understand how you think you can just, like, by the time that the bad shots came in, Stefan is probably already halfway down his reload. Yeah, the, the thing is, is okay. And the bad shots didn't even use shots because yeah. I don't think Nexus or Durs picked out to shoot. Okay, like, um, Maraca's going in there to draw fire. Um, but the thing is, is that nobody else in Utopia are in position to give counter fire. So Marrakesh is going up there taking shots for all nothing. They, all they wanted is for the Kranwagen and the Emil to be on reload. And then they wanted to do the damage onto Nexus, Durs, kill both of them, kill the Kranwagen as well and run away and re-engage afterwards. Well, Bishu, well, Bihu from the south gets the shot onto the K-line, but he got 1v1 by Haiba and Haiba won that. So, like, the tactic fell apart on every single part of the plan. I've not, not really seen... Any tactic in mode of anchor using a mouse actually been effective yet? I, I don't know. Like, uh, yes, Maraca took a lot of. Maybe if he didn't trade in the beginning against Fetso and he had 1.2k. Maybe. K, if he had 1.2k mo more HP because he took 1.2 from Fetso in the email, if he had that HP extra, if he was like 2.6 or so, which he wasn't, then he would have taken more shots because Kranwagen and Emil would struggle to kill him if he angles well. Then maybe some TVP shots. That'd be three tanks reloading, high out of the fight. That's four tanks that aren't able to do the damage with just three remaining. Then it might have worked, but Marakar took too much initial damage if that was the plan. Yep. Um, another one where as, as Utopia, we need to ask what was the plan on Muravanka and Gohard, we need to ask what was the plan on Prokhorovka when they went double mouse. Um, we have the lineups ready, Daki, here for round two. So let's see if it's fairly standard lineups for each team or if they're going to go with any kind of special play. S tank being used from Utopia in defense here, Daki. Well, S tank can work in defense as a good sniper, Kranwagen. All in all, solid lineup. Kazna crew here, E5, object 430. They can go play that cap if they, do, they choose so, because that 430 works in there very well four bat chats as well so they've got plenty of firepower there from the bat chats now with Kasna crew taking that object 430 version 2 does this look like perhaps something around base 2 no the 430 can be put into base 1 because of the low profile he can sit on the cap and bait out the shots that way yet to see a team do a proper base 2 tactic the only one we saw was Swift using that Lorraine Arte on its side and then having the the IS-7 push into it, but a lot of teams just kind of either go for base one or just kind of fan out in the middle and don't really know what to do. Well, let's find out if Utopia or Kasna crew have a plan here as we are on round two of Muravanka. Kasna crew, red team attacking, leading Utopia two to one. Utopia, blue camouflage defending on the blue side. Isna back into the lineup. Who's not playing? Vetso. Vetso. So Vetso not playing. Okay, and they're going towards the western side. I don't think that's going to work out well for them, though, because the trap from Utopia, or well, trap, MX-3090 with three tanks behind us there. It's also no Papa Pau in, in Utopia this time. It's Shoku who's playing the scout for them. Hmm, interesting. Papa Pau was playing one of the damage dealers last time around. Is Muka just spotting here? Because he, he's in the STRV. He could possibly spot for himself, drive backwards, double push, and shoot. 
because that tank's camo value is insane. There's two angles of spotting here. Nexus needs to be careful as well. He just need has blind fire to know he's moving up. Let's see. Let's see what Muka is able to do from here. I'm going to be very, in, very interesting. Spot his name, and he's already spotted. That's a blind fire going out to him. They know somebody's there. Yizni straight away knows somebody's there. Probably expecting the AMX to be there rather than Muka. Muka can't shoot now. He's not double bushed. He has to stay there and spot. Interesting how they think that is a good play. I mean, he could take a lot of damage here before anything even happens. Yizni's aiming at the bush beside him now. Nobody else from Kazna's aiming that way. Colossoid got spotted and so Colossoid did Rilezic. spotted and Rizalik as well at the back. That is not good though. Looks like they're trying to give covering fire for their teammate. Backing off, Rilezic takes a bounce off his armor, but he's already way down past half health. Three quarter health damage. Look at all these shots coming in from Kazna Cruz. They're desperate to find these two tanks of Utopia and take them out quickly. Utopia needs to make a counterplay right now because there's only room for one tank to sit there and spot it. You can see Colossoid just got unspotted. I wonder who was able to get the spot onto them. Might have been a Haiba even from the middle. And now the counterplay needs to come in. They need to go kill Haiba almost right now. Another two shots going out into Muka. They think they know that somebody's there now. Yizni's just putting shot after shot into that area. He's on fire. Muka is going to burn here. He doesn't have an extinguisher. Now he's having to move. He's spotted. Yizni picks up the kill and he's just farmed a huge amount of damage there on Muka. Honestly, that was again questionable. Very, very questionable. They're now going to go kill Haiba which they have to do, but it's maybe even a little bit too late. Let's see. If they kill Haiba, they can make it work, perhaps. Haiba down, FC Dynamo taking damage in that return now. Dares and Diplomat being shot at as they charge forward across the battlefield here. Colozoid gets taken out in quick succession there from Nexus as Kaznakru have picked up yet another tank of Utopia. Utopia look like they're on the rope stack and Shoku is now the next one to fall. This is... Honestly, one of the worst Muravankas I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. That is just waste of a tier 10 tank, waste of an STRV. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about the tactics, but I do not um, agree with putting the S tank in that position whatsoever. It's just ridiculous. You can even see when you get set on fire, obviously your crew goes down. I think it's 50% as well when you're on fire. Um, it's just what can, what can he do there? He He's there to scout. He can't shoot from it. I don't understand if he was there to shoot, perhaps, but... Why would you have him scouting there rather than your AMX? Strange. Stefan is going to get caught out here, though. Stefan driving across the middle, Dynamo and Biku looking to get shots into him. Both of them connect and Stefan goes down in the blink of an eye, so Utopia have picked up a tank back, but it's still five guns and five tanks of Kazna crew against four of Utopia. Kazna crew have a 2k HP advantage here as well. They're on the attack, they need to make something move. Utopia are happy to sit back in defense, but all the damage here, all the, all the HP is on Maraca and Bihu, and they've barely been in the fight at all, either of them. It's such an unnecessary play almost from Stefan to take a risky route into a position he thought could they get safely. Goes down for that, and that actually might bring it back almost even here. I mean, yes, there's an HP advantage, for Kasna, a 2k1 even at that, but Kasna crew always has to put a tank out of the fight if they want to start capping. He's you know, blind fighting to try and find out where uh, Rulzek is. Cap started by Diplomat, Kasna should know exactly where that area is because it's one of the few places you can cap unspotted at the back corner. Will someone connect with a blind shot into Diplomat though? Probably not. I'm still interested to see if they're, for example, going to push Maraca across the K-line. I've been waiting for a team to do that. Maybe that K6 position, K7 is kind of hold down, but I think for now they're just uh, sticking to Blindfire. Blindfire coming out, trying to find Diplomat. Komi Piotr is there as his Nexus to be able to deal with anyone coming through the middle to get the spots in Diplomat. It will be a suicide run for whoever has to do that, but they have a bit of time to play Utopia to be able to try and formulate a plan to counter this. No connections so far, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of time left, which is the biggest factor here. If you clear the bushes, if you go for clearing the bushes against AMX3090, you're almost done at this point normally, and there's four minutes left or so, and then you start to cap. But now, they almost have nothing left, and there's <laughs> still four minutes left. So, now Dynamo and Bihu will flank around. This could work, possibly. Dares sitting, waiting, ready to deal with that. Yeah, but if, 
if uh, Dinamo just goes straight for it and Durs isn't ready for it, then... Call me Piotr's taking shots. He's been spotted. Tracking damage and a single damaging shot. Maraca's going for it. Maraca, with all the health, going to YOLO into Call Me Piotr, get him spotted and see if there's any potential crossfire shots. spotted all, everybody on the cap. Diplomat seen by Maraca. There's two tanks in the cap circle. Maraca needs to make his shots count. One tank, one of them's already pulled away. Both of them pull away. Maraca in a crossfire has to be a bit careful here, but he has broken up the cap. But now he's in a crossfire situation where Yuzni can get shots into him, Komi Porta can get shots into him, and the rest of the guns from Kasna crew can get shots into him. But Diplomat taking a huge amount of damage there, Daki, as he tries to back away. Yeah, indeed, but Maraca in return oh. isn't very much better. He goes down, even more HP lost. If they can kill Piotr, perhaps, but they can't. The cap will get restarted, and this is the beginning of the end for Utopia in this round. I don't agree with Maraca just sitting there. I mean, it would have been better to just push towards Piotr to do as much damage as he can. Just sitting there in the open, you're spotting the capture, but not making... Don't, don't, not even utilizing his clip very well, and that's just, you know, like uh, a mistake you should make. You should at least... Tomoza trades? Well, he knows he's dead, so he needs to make his clip count. At least he can, at least he can do is go for Piotr and kill him. Kill the E5 or make him low HP so your team has something. He knows he's not going to survive, so... Two tank cap here started so that they're forcing Utopia to come out and do something. Will it go down to a certain point and then go to free tank cap, Daki? I'm sorry, your two camp tank cap at this point. I don't think they'll put anybody else on there. They, they're fine where they are right now, so... Dynamo spotted and sniped by a Diplomat there. Miku taking a lot of damage now as well as he trades off with Dares here at the end of the match. Token gesture from Utopia if he can get the kill on Dares, but I think Dares will pick him up as he does. One tank remaining here, it's his Rulzik on Utopia. Kasna crew are likely to cap this one out as he, unless he runs into the guns. Four seconds left on the cap, three, two, one, and Kasna crew pick up the round and now go ahead 3-1 up here against Utopia. That was terrible. You've been pretty disappointed with a lot of matches so far, Daki. That was... What are you supposed to say about that? They throw away an entire tier 10 for a spot that has been used by scouts. So you could see Isna, as soon as he gets spotted, he's like, there's so many in the bushes. Click, 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 click until you kill him. And he did die. And then Colossoid and Rulezic are sitting in the open as well, somehow getting spotted, taking damage. Uh, yeah, questionable place, questionable tactic. Kazna crew making the most out of it, though. So, 3-1. 3-1, indeed. Let's have a look at the damage in that round, see who came out on top. I think Mojo might be have a little bit cause for celebration for once, as Biku now tops the damage charts there for Utopia. Rip. Yizni coming in Dynamo, and second top damage. Dynamo, Stefan. I'm not doing all too terrible. Maraca doing better than both of them, though. Yeah, but he didn't play in one round. Yeah, but he played in this round, so that's all that matters. Yizni, Dares, Nexus, um, three of the guys you'd expect. Well, not necessarily Yizni you'd expect to do a lot of damage in this round, but Dares and Nexus, certainly. Um, Komi Piotr, Colosoid, ninth place there. High by then Diplomat, Muka, Rula, Zek, and Shoku. Three last players, all from Utopia, the S tank. I expected so much more from this match, and it's really been disappointing so far. Uh, the positioning of the S tank was questionable. That's that's definitely for sure. Um, like multiple positions were questionable. Where Colossoid and Rulezic were playing that he allowed himself to be spotted is questionable. I mean, what gets me is, how's that S-Tank going to be effective there? Who are you going to shoot at that you're going to have crossfire shots in where you're not going to get shot? I, I thought he was going to try something like sit behind the bush, the spot for himself, and then drive behind it, double bush himself, and just fire, 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 and then hope that he doesn't get connected too much and just push them back more and more and more and maybe make a counterplay at that point. But he just sat there, and that is that He's is a thing I don't understand. If he tried to make a play, tried to do damage from there, tried to double bush himself, shoot from behind it, and push them back, then maybe the bad shots can push up and, and, and can come close or something like that. Here's but. the thing. Who's one of the best-known teams and the teams who are one of the best at clearing the bushes on Muravanka? Kaz and the crew are one of the ones who are able to do it the best. And Yisne knew exactly where he... He hit it. He hit it. On the he first he shot. pretty much was like, right, okay, I'm spotted. That's where I'm going to aim at, where I think somebody would be able to spot me from. 
and connected and, and Mocha just took an absolute beating. Um, now we're ready to go into map number three, Daki, which is going to be Himmelsdorf. Um, city map, one of the oldest maps. Kasna crew could potentially take the match here by winning both rounds. Let's see the, the tank picks and see if there's anything unusual being used here or if it is standard. Double T10 on the defense, I4, I7, Bacha, double 50B. This is an aggressive hold tactic, at least it looks like that. We've seen this from Utopia last season. You go aggressive into the courtyard with a double T10, taking the eight line, locking them down from there. I mean, at least it looks like that. That's the lineup, but it looks like that. Kasna crew, Kranwagen, that'd be 4,005. Hill, probably, with the Kranwagen coming down towards the zero line, like we've seen multiple teams do at this point. It will be interesting. Is this going to be another round of mistakes, or is it going to be a round of outplays and skill? At the moment, it seems to be a lot of Kasna crew's victories have just been kind of handed to them by Utopia. But then, at the same time, we did have some questionable plays from Kasna crew as well, Daki, so it's not been a polished performance from either side, really, has it? No, Utopia has just made more mistakes uh, so far, and all these rounds have been a little bit scrappy. I mean, the one, the, the one round, Kazna 1 and Prokhorovka has been very clear, but uh, and Moravanka as well, but this one wasn't super well played. I mean, it could have been a little bit better, Stefan not dying, for example, or such, but Himmelsdorf. Yep, let's jump into the action here. It's map number three. It's 3-1 three to Kasna. We're going to Himmelsdorf. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Kasna crew, red side are attacking in the black and white camouflage. Utopia in the blue camouflage. On the blue side are defending. Kasna crew splitting up their forces, Daki. Yeah, Kranwagen not going towards the hill. Interesting, interesting indeed. The T10s are moving towards the courtyard, I think. It looks like that. They're going towards the five line now. They should turn into the seven line and towards the courtyard. And I think Kasna crew will look to punish as there's a 50B in the windows already. A 113 about to join him. And let's see if Papa actually decides to cross because this is... Okay, he doesn't go over the rubble. I'm very glad with this because he would have been dead. He's going to peek through the window though. Can call me Pio to get a shot. No. Oh, but there's a connection onto Maraca, coming down from the hill. Two, four, six. Big bounce there. Haiba, the looks like Haiba getting a shot onto Maraca there. No, it wasn't Haiba. Where did that come from? FE 4005, probably. From uh, Nexus. Yep. Splash damage then? Uh, could have been. How could it only do two, four, five? Hit something like the gun or a very well armored piece. Okay. Okay. Haiba took a damage and shot up on the hill where he's facing off against one of the bat chats. Honestly, right now, Utopia is in a little bit better position. Bat chat from Kazan crew will join him. They will probably push the zero line. Question is can they do enough damage to hold the second 50B from. Who is, who is the second 50B there? Colossoid. Should possibly be joining his buddy in A5, I think, at this moment in time. And if they do that, Bihu can just run away when they push down and do a lot of damage onto those Kazna crew tanks. Maraka taking another hit there, Daki. And Nexus just splashing <laughs> through the through the building. That's insane. He doesn't have enough ammo for that, though. Remember how many shells an FE has, Ryan? It's like 15 or something? 12, I think. 12. I know the FETD has 12. I don't know I if don't the stage know. has the I'm same. I'm pretty sure right now chat is correcting us and questioning our no, for I know, for, I know, I know 100% that the FE 183 has 12, and I think the stage has the same. I honestly am not sure. I know it's really low. Ooh, that's 6 a big 608. Hit. That was a connection. That was much better. But Nexus is playing with his ammo here to try and take out Maraca. Maraca's pinned in that area. And he just keeps getting lit all the time by Komi Piotr. But Papa Palvin, Daki, has pushed all the way over and is right in front of Komi Piotr here in the middle of the courtyard. He's not going to gain them much. I mean, he can't really do anything against Piotr except for just proxy spot him. So 
is that Morocco needs to survive really badly. Nexus is just about reloaded. He's looking for it. He's looking for that shot. He's going to stop now because he knows he's uh, using up Can't a lot really of ammunition. The, the and he got spotted as well. Mukka, crossfire here. Call me Piotr and shots coming down from the hill as well. So T10 of Mukka and IS4 of Maraca caught between a rock and a hard place here. They need to retreat and try and get out of that area, but there's brilliant crossfire here from Kasna crew, really punishing them. Another shot comes out from Nexus, 819 this time. One more and he's dead in that IS4. And this is great stuff from Kasna crew. Predicting a cheek even from Piotr. Nexus will probably finish it off on the next shot. Maraca just cannot move. All he can do is wiggle, and wiggling doesn't help because it allows him to be shot at from Nexus. There we Nexus go. Nexus getting the kill on Maraca. It only took him five shells, almost half his ammo pool. Vetso now trading with Rulazek. Rulazek gets a shot out into Vetso and bounces the return shot. Utopia are going to want to do something in return here. They've taken a huge amount of damage on two tanks, losing one of them. And Kasna crew on the attack and control here, they are dictating this battlefield. The thing is, they can't really do much. I mean, they should pull back Vetso to the hill, probably. He goes to play to D0. Looking down onto Bihu, he will be able to push him back. And from there on, they can start taking control over that eastern side of the map. Doesn't look like they're about to do that. Though. Perhaps they will just go for a straight A-line push. If they, they think they have the numbers, they think they have the tanks. Perhaps, perhaps. Papa Powell and missing there on Vetso as Vetso dares and Nexus come around the corner. Vetso taking a shot there from Mukka who backs off. Diplomat now leading a charge. It looks like Kasna crew are going to go for a banana road push, Daki, and Mukka could find himself in a really bad place. But it looks like he may actually switch around into Papa Powell. Nexus though taking out Mukka. Big massive shot there from the FV 4002. 4005 <laughs> even as um, Papa Powell now is the next one to be focused on. Yeah, it's just falling to pieces pretty much for Utopia. They have so much HP left, but Stefan and Hybar on the flank. Dares coming round here with Diplomat. Dares taking a shot to the face as well as the rest of Utopia back round this corner. Hybar now coming round as well. Dares and Diplomat kind of want to go back in to deal with Papa Powen, but we see Rulazek coming round there to help as well. Casting the crew kind of getting caught a little bit here in the banana road, but Utopia just running out of angles really to put into them. I still think that uh, Bihu and Dynamo need to peek and kill Haiba right now. Exchange there between Rulazek and Nexus, both of them missing. Dynamo getting the kill on Haiba, Papa Powen taking multiple shots there as Vesso gets the kill onto him. So Utopia have lost yet another tank. There are four tanks left. Kasna crew, five tanks left as we see Vesso getting dropped in the cram wagon. Bihu now gets dropped for Utopia. Kasna crew still in control here, five tanks to three of Utopia. HP round about the same though, Daki, but guns in the game being important. Guns in the game being important, yes, but the HP is very important as well. Keep in mind that Nexus in the stage two has a lot of HP, which is very, very useless HP if he doesn't connect. I'm interested to see how many shots Nexus has left as well, but there's no way to be able to check that. Unless we're seeing it from the player point of view, Three. I don't think we'll see the ammo. Three, you can see it, look. Three. Unless he has one AP shell, that's three. Three sitting in center there, yep, yeah. okay. He might have one AP shells, one AP shot or so, but uh, I doubt it actually. He's got to make sure those shots count. Could be vital in the upcoming trade. Dares sitting around that corner. Rulazek able to get a shot into Dares from the back here. Can he make it? No, no. another miss. Rulazek, that's probably going to be a vital miss that could have affected the whole battle here as Nexus is going to put one back in his face. We'll have to see about that. 424 from Nexus. Diplomat getting wrecked here on the cap circle as he gets forced off it by Dynamo and Colazoid. Rulazek took damage to an IS-7, but now he's able to get shots back into Stefan, who's only got two shots left. He has HP to take... No, sorry, not Stefan, Nexus. Nexus is going to be having to work as a blocker, Daki, soon. Yeah, but Rulezek here, again, he needs to start connecting some shots. If he connected one or two, game be already over at this point, but he hasn't, and it's really costed his team at this point. If he'd shot theirs, he'd be on a one-shot, and if he connected there, then Komi Piotr would have been on a one-shot. Nexus is driving onto the cap as well now, so three times back on the cap, and Nexus is one of those. 
That's one of the times that the 50 Bs can't pick again. Dynamo might be able to get Piotr though. Triple cap coming in here. Dynamo full health, four shots. Wants to get the shot into Piotr and kill him. He needs to get around that corner as well to reset Kazna crew. Has to be careful. We're down to 10 seconds. Oh, sorry, 12 seconds on the cap circle. Dynamo going right now in the reset. Two shots available to him. Reset coming in there, back to 15 seconds. Kozoid nearly dead, 36 health. Utopia hanging in here just by the skin of their teeth, but so is Kasna crew, down to seven seconds. Reset needs to come now. Rulazet gets the shot into Nexus and resets. Nexus now is going to act as a blocker. Rulazet goes down, Dares gets the kill on him. Nexus doesn't look like he's got any ammo left, Aki. Perhaps, no, but there's another reset that buys some time for Dynamo, which is all he needs to do. Colossoid has one more shot here. He does it onto Nexus as well, four Nexus seconds. Nexus has not got the cap points though. Nexus is blocking him. Nexus does that final shot. One second left. They're going to take the cap here. Utopia whoa, whoa, coming whoa, whoa. in at the last moment, not able to do it. Never ever switch away this early because he has one more shot. Like it's literally not over just it's yet. It's not over yet. The game's still going right now. Now never, it's finished. Never ever go away too early. Bit eager there to jump out of the battle. This is too early. Okay, so what you saw at the end was Dynamo coming in against four tanks of Kazna crew. Three on a one shot, Nexus on a two shot. Rams Nexus kills him, kills the next tank, kills the next tank, and almost gets the last one, which would win the round for Utopia and it would make us all look like fools. But um, somebody was a little bit eager in jumping out of the battle there. Never go out too early when there's only one shot left. Um, but. Kazna crew were able to just steal it at the last Colossoid had to Colossoid had to make a peek and try and hit Diplomat, but hitting Nexus, I don't know. Yeah, I think he was uh, a tough tough one to call. Yo, if there's peaks and he died, it'd be great. We'd love it. That's how the NA finals were lost at one point. A few seasons ago, there was this uh, team. Uh, I think it was Simp even, and uh, they were on the cap. Was it in the, like the ca three three yes. shots, three caps, three resets or something? No, no, like no. That. They were they, it was a hundred percent capped or something, and, and they then killed three times. and then they killed everybody after the time, and the other team won. So, well, it's always a hard one to call because it did look like it was over. So you know, them's the breaks. Kazna crew did still win. So Kazna crew now match point four one against Utopia. Utopia leaving it till the very last second to come in there and reset. Not quite able to get all the resets down in time. Now let's have a look at the stats and see where the damage came from from both teams. Colossoid, Don Dinamo, Davai. Colossoid nearly getting. 3k, 5, 5k, stop punching me, Daki. Nearly getting 5k. I know you're really excited for Colazoid. Dynamo finally coming up. Trumps for me, you, and Mojo with five kills as well. And Rulezic need to connect. needed to connect some shots here. Rulezic probably cost Utopia the game, to be honest, right now. He missed at least three shots they should have connected with. Yeah, and he even missed one on Nexus in the beginning, if you remember, close yep. range. So there's that as well. A rip, a rip. I feel like Utopia should have had this round even after losing Muka, although Muka peaked very eagerly. Nexus was like, what's up? Maraca, mate. <laughs> Bihu, <laughs> Mojo. I suppose, yep, them's the breaks, them's the breaks. Um, yep, Kasna crew now sitting here. Match point, um, four to one. Teams are going to switch positions now. I believe it's Kasna crew on the defense, Daki. No, Kasna crew. Kesna crew defending now. Oh, but don't forget another thing here. This is good for my fantasy team. Because Stefan got 2k damage, but got 25 cap points. And then there is uh, Dynamo who got 78 decap points. And then there is Colossus who got 54 decap points. Well, this is turning into a good round, isn't it? <laughs> Give me the close-up smug cam, please. Yeah. Uh, feels good, man. Feels good. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Pepe cam. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, now let's go into the lineups for round two here on Himmelsdorf. Daki, how do you think it's going to go? Do you think Kazna are going to get this one? Do you think they're going to take the, the round in the match? I have to give it to Kazna, although this could have been so much closer. I expected this really to be a close match. Still in favour of Kazna Crew Utopia, kind of underperforming from what we've seen from them. Second round even, second time even that they uh, do this against Gohard as well. So maybe on a little bit of a downward spiral. Well, we're going to see a clash of the titans here. If we bring up the lineups, we can see we're going to have Death Star versus Death Star. So probably 
It's going to be Diplomat or Nexus playing it? Because Nexus played the FV. Nexus is in the FV for Kazna, yep. Okay, and it's Colossoid for Utopia. Colossoid for Utopia. <laughs> Let's hope you, uh, Colossoid wins. So, but Emil 2, this kind of says they might do something similar to what I've seen on the CIS server, or was the European server, not sure, where the Emil 2 goes towards uh, B8 and sits hold down there and tries to... Uh, Play from there. Marak is not playing with Utopia this round. Rip fantasy oh, points. What is? Oh. And no else we've not actually saw all Walla. match. No Walla. 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 Maybe he's uninstalled and doesn't have the game ready. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. Okay. Now everyone looks ready to go, Daki. So we're about to jump into the action. Kasna I'll give crew. it to Utopia just for uh, you know the. I mean, if Kasna crew take it, they take the map, they take the round, and they take the match, and it'll be a nice win for them. I mean, both like I said, Utopia were on one win loss coming into this. Kasna crew were on win loss loss. Kasna crew need the win really. They really need to pull it yeah, out. Yeah, three bag. losses in a row wouldn't feel that good. Well, let's have a look and see if they can do it here on Himmelsdorf. Kasna crew on the red side are defending with the black and white camo. Utopia on the blue side are attacking with the blue camo. It's going to be a tough one for Utopia. I mean, a lot of these rounds between these teams have came right down to the wire. And as we were saying between and when the video was shown, Daki, there's been a lot of... I mean, it's been a lot of mistakes that have been basically deciding the matches rather than skillful plays. Yeah, a lot of mistakes... Uh mainly coming from Utopia, but you can see that Kazna crew is going to go towards the east, no surprise because of the Emil. Uh, it is a telegraphed pick because it has been used before and teams do watch other regions just like we do. You can see Haiba, once we go to his position, you'll be able to see exactly what I talk about. He's in the Emil, he'll just be spotting towards the hill, hold down, and they'll be Real playing around already it. taking a damage gun, Taki, there. Knocked out gun. Yep, and uh, Nex is taking damage in the FV. Spotted in the middle. You just need to show Haiba at one point so we can. Uh, so they traded with each other then? Yep, they traded Nexus with Binos to spot that window. That's a trade you wouldn't expect to go that way normally. No, but at least, uh, I mean, Rulezic used his repair kit. So unless he has two, that means he has no repair kit for the rest of the game. It's a large repair kit used because he had damage tracks as well, I think. We can see. Let's have a look at the moment now. You're talking about Haiba Daki. I believe he's in a hold down position beside Rubble up at the north of the map here. Yeah, and he kind of locks down that zero line just by himself in that Emil 2. I mean, uh, it's it's a great position. It's been used before and it might be used even more in the future when teams get aware of it. There he is there, hull down in front of Diplomat and Dares, using the slope of the rubble to give himself that dank, dank armour for his turret. Yeah, you can see just <laughs> the minus 12 gun depression <laughs> from the Emil, and it's um, um, impossible to penetrate what, at that point. What position? I mean, you can still see the... I mean, But you can lift the he's gun. He's just going to lift the gun, isn't he? And yes. When he lifts the gun, the back deck of the gun turret will then just yep, um, exactly. go up in the air, and you're never going to pen that. So, yeah, this is... Uh, very hard to deal with, in essence. Lovely camera shot here showing this off. Mm, gun depression. Oh. Ryan, please relax. But it seems like Utopia is going to be moving towards the rails, and it does. It is the right option, but you keep, need to, to factor in. Uh, behind that house, you can be resetted by HE at some points, and Kazna has an FETD. It was Stefan was just going across the uh, the A line there, and then Mocha was spotted. He's like, "Oh, hang on!" And now he's taken up position in the train tracks. Now he's driving away, just as Utopia make their move along the bottom of the map here. I'm not surprised they are taking this side. I mean, <coughs> it is again another thing of teams watch other teams as well. Watch how they play, study, learn, adapt, overcome. <laughs> yeah, uh, so they they do it. They use it themselves so once they realize it. And Utopia seems to be aware that the Emil 2's position is going to be over there. High is pushing towards the hill now to get some info. Once Shuku spots him out, that will make Utopia probably go a little bit quicker because that is the info they want, that's the info they need. Vetso now taking up position in the train station down at the front. Yeah, but uh, how effective do you think a T10 turret is against an FVTD? <laughs> we'll find out in just a couple of seconds if a shot comes in. Um, Colzoid, we need to pull this one out the bag. 
Now there's some movement here from Utopia. Well, they're aiming at it already. Nexus spotted in the middle there by Rulazek. They didn't trade shots. Nexus holds his shots, so does Rulazek. If the Vetsu gets spotted, Colossoid will have the shot. I think there's a blind fire coming out there. Just a Vetsu yeah, shot. Vetsu blind so fire. Sure, yeah. Papa Pawin just doing a little bit of scouting. Just checking that nobody's in that train there as he smashes it open. Does he spot Vetsu? Colossoid just aiming straight down that area. Still already. didn't spot Vetsu. He's zoned, he's zoned in. Come Vetsu on. not spotted. Papa, find him, come on. We want to see some big dank damage coming out of the 215183 here. Oh, he's not got angle. Vetzel's actually behind mm. the archway, so he wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't connect if he does get spotted. Vetzel, safe for now in this area. Now, Daki, how are Utopia... Safe? He doesn't look that safe to me. Oh, how are Utopia going to push through here? Vetzel blind firing again and still not getting spotted. Amex 1390 on the cap and uh, hope that the FETD doesn't get the reset. This was just going forward at just the right time. Colossoid really, he knows there's somebody there, he just doesn't know exactly where he is. Next is spotted again from Rulazek. There we go, Papa's going towards the cap. Stefan spotted. He needs to be careful, Colossoid is aiming. Stefan's behind the building though, he doesn't have a shot on him there. If he peeks, he does. <laughs> Vetzel spotted. Will he connect now? Will he connect with the shot? Well, let's see. Vetzel blind fired. Nothing coming out of Colossoids yet. Mukka taking a bit of damage there and he's 113. Vetzel still lit at the moment. Let's, we'll have to see. Oh, so close. Ever so close. Vetzel blind firing as well. If he peeks up further. If he just goes to the right rather than to the left. Oh, there's a connection from Mukha. It's not forcing him to go the other way. I mean, he doesn't have any idea that Colossoid's there. We have a rough idea. Komi Piotr has got a dead driver in his IS-7. And there's a rotation Daki coming around here down the banana road from Kasna crew. It's very slow. I mean, Utopia could choose to boost the cap at any point because there's so many Kasna crew tanks out of the fight even. Mukha taking damage, Diplomat taking damage, Mukha taking a lot of damage here and he's 113. Crossfire Dynamo getting a shot back into Komi Piotr. Mukha's now pushed up trying to get additional vision onto Vetso. He connects with him, Vetso damages Mukha as well. Dynamo coming around, he wants shots into Diplomat. Shoku taking a lot of damage in his batch chat for Utopia there. Trade for trade at the moment, neither team really getting advantage and the HP pool is still roughly about the same. Yeah, but Colossus is going to go, jo go join or boost the cap. Nexus will be the one to reset. Three tanks on it. Ten and, uh, seconds. Kasna crew, what can you do to reset? It looks like there isn't anyone there to reset. Three seconds, five seconds to come in. Colossoid's moving up. Connects with Stefan. 1,732 damage there, Daki. Right in the face of that batch. Just needs to shield. Just needs to shield. Three seconds left. He's trying to block in Papa Pound. Stefan goes down. Kasna crew are going to get outcapped here by Utopia. And that was a lovely play there. Papa Pound in the AMX there. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, Ooh. I did say it at one point there is the potential here for Utopia to boost the cap at any point, and it was at one point Muka just drives on it, and so did Colossoid. And Colossoid not disappointing us with a big, big hit on towards Stefan. 1.732. <laughs> Ow! That would have hurt. That would have hurt. Good stuff there from Utopia. That was like uh, Mayland in um, Himmelsdorf when he went round and got slapped in the back by the FE as well. 2K. Dank, dank damage. Colossoid pulling out the bag there. Um, so, 4-2. Kasna crew still on match point, but we're going to be going to the next map after this, Daki. We're going to be going to Runeberg. Yep. Could get some vehicle shenanigans. We just saw it in the previous round between Gohard mm -hmm. and Ding. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the damage first and before we jump into Ruinberg and see who came out on top for the teams there. Predictions? Uh, Were you looking at it already? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, on, I'm honest this time. Vetso, top damage. Uh huh. But he then was in that area. Colossoid. Colossoid, one shot. One, one shot easy. Stefan, if you had one shot, one opportunity, would you take it? Yep, so Colossoid, 1,732 and decap and cap, five cap points on him. And Stefan, 
Yeah, not that great, but also five uh, DK points. So there's something there. There's something. Dynamo also doing decent. Marakar, not to be found on the first page. Probably not to be found on the second. He wasn't playing in this round. We already established that. <laughs> Stop rubbing it in, Deki. Oh, don't worry. There's more to rub in once we see 8 to 14. Ryan, don't worry about nah, that. We don't need to see the rest of the stats. Let's just move on to Ruinberg. <laughs> yep, thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. There okay. we go. Stefan Daki, 10th place. Well yeah, played. Yeah, but he got DK points. Bihu in 9th place. Mojo, great pick there. <laughs> <laughs> this Bihu pick is really paying off, man. Just really going well for him. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you had you had Annihilator and Barry earlier on as well, though. Who did it Annihilator well, actually. Well. They did okay, actually. We'll see, well, we'll see, we'll see when the weekend's over. As I said, my team was set up just to give yeah, people Yeah, yeah, you keep saying that. You keep yep. saying that. But when, I'm generous. Uh, I'm generous. I'm, when it I'm comes playing... When it comes to the crucial phase, you'll be like, I was always playing for the win. All I wanted to it do... Just, it was just a rope of dope. I was just pretending uh -huh. I was playing for the gold. Uh -huh. And everyone will be like, Hector, you lied. Runeberg, who was attacking first? Uh, I don't know, actually. Um, you have the information there, usually. Can we perhaps get Wait. a voice from, from beyond who can tell us who's Kazla's attacking first? defending first, so that means Utopia is attacking. Anything special? Oh, okay. Don't, yeah, special mm. stuff. We're not going to give it away just yet. It's going to be interesting. Mm. I wonder how Kazna Crew, now, let's say Utopia does something what Kazna Crew did with like flipping a tank, fl like, uh, you know, flipping somebody over. Uh, is Kazna Crew going to be able to counter that? Because it's there. They did it first. Now are they going to be well, able to counter their own thing? I think Kazna would know how to counter it because it'd be like, this is what we need to watch for, this is what we need to be careful for. Are you sure for. though? Because, you know, the uh, sometimes you make a tactic and you're not even sure what beats you it yourself. To, you have to know how to counter your no, own No, not tactic. always. Not always. Sometimes you make a tactic and it's so good and you're like, uh, I'm not I sure. I think we could do it. I'm I not sure how could. to beat it. I don't think they would um, go for that tactic. But well, we'll see. we'll see. Let's have a look at the lineups and see what's planned here from Utopia and Kazna. Utopia are going to be attacking E50. And this doesn't look like... Somebody trying to farm W and 8? Don't they know the formula has changed? <laughs> this doesn't look like... Uh, Anything we've seen before? Maybe they'll try to flip the E50. No. <laughs> Maybe, man. Why would you take an E50 <laughs> just to flip it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Ask Utopia if they do it. I mean, maybe it's, Other something, than that, maybe, maybe it's something on base 2. Could be, but such a slow lineup that Kazna crew will have control over everything before they get there. Kazna do have a very mobile lineup, plus the DPM as well coming out there from the dual FV215Bs, the AMX and the Batcha as well, and that T54 lightweight we're reckoning is going to be down the right hand side of the map. It's going to be interesting this one, Daki. It's going to be interesting. I'm curious. I'm very curious if they're going to flip the E50 or not, but maybe base 2 play like you said. I'll be, yeah, I want to see how they're doing this one. Runeberg always usually brings out surprise picks from teams, so how they're going to do it, I don't know. We can find out. Kasna Crew leads Utopia 4-2, match point. Can he win? Let's find out. Let's go to Runeberg. <laughs> Kazna crew, black and white camouflage, red side are going to defend and Utopia attacking <laughs> with the blue camouflage. Daki, they are not going to flip the E50. <laughs> I swear to God, if they flip this E50, I am going to walk off and you're going to solo cast the rest of the evening. This the last match or whatever, man. Oh, let's see if what they're going to do. Let's see what they have planned, what they have in store for us. And the 113 is going straight across, actually, or not? No, he's not. Don't do it. Don't do it, Rulazek. Why would you take an E50 just to flip? It's just a waste of tier points. I don't know if they're going to flip it. They might just drive it onto the cap as well, man. And they're blind firing to where theirs is, but nobody's connecting with anything. I mean, they have some kind of tactic here for base one. Maybe the E2, E100s, but they've got nothing they can really... Well, Papa Palvin could hide behind one of them. You don't call Zoid going up first there, do you? Utopia. They actually have Piotr spotting, which is hilarious. Maracas taking damage. FC Dynamo is now taking damage. 
How are they going to do this, Daki? What do you see? Dynamo taking more damage and losing his driver as he's the one that pushes up and the E50 pushes up as well. Is he going to angle the E50? And the object behind it... Okay. Okay. Might work. Let's see. Cap has started. So there's that. And the first reset shot <laughs> comes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that plan, Utopia, already looks like it has a spanner in its works. As Diplomat can connect you there with the T62. Well, Diplomat should be connected as well. But if somebody comes that. around the corner, there's, they can splash Papa Palin because they can hit his turret because he's not rotated his turret. Well, let's, let's see. Let's see. Might be able to splash the corner of the house and reset him with H3. So far, so good. Ooh, Colossoid. Colossoid taking a lot of damage as he drives across. Taking yeah, one gonna, shot, actually. He's going to take some more from a Hyber because Hyber's just going to peek out and punish him. I'm sure whoever comes around that corner can... Oh, no, they can't. Maybe they can't. Maybe they've done it. Maybe we're going to see the first possible... Nope. Nope. <laughs> 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 oh well, Ducky. Well, well. I was gonna. I so want to see a team do this properly. I said last week, don't do it. It doesn't work. And we've tried. We've seen two different versions of it now. And an E50 being used. Thankfully, it didn't flip. But I, I mean, that's that's a tier nine to use as a blocker. Why are you not using a tier eight for it? And then you can have a better gun in a tier nine somewhere. It also depends on how much HP ammo they have, you know. Vetso taking damage, trying to get an angle there. Komi Piotr is driven right up behind the He's bush He's been there now. since the beginning of the game. <laughs> okay. Spotting for his team. Papa Powen But if he gets spotted, like once he drives and Colossoid gets spotted, Colossoid will, Colossoid will, Colossoid will yeah. uh... Yeah, we'll say hello. Colossoid shooting over towards Vetso's area. No, towards Diplomat, towards Diplomat. Okay, not connecting. Kazna Cruz still with all the HP. Hyba sneaking around the back here. He's not going to surprise Utopia in the way that Betso got surprised and he was hiding too deep behind that fountain area. Hyba spotted, so they know someone's coming around that corner. Guys, that might be in trouble, mate. I mean, Utopia still have two E100s as well, Daki, to soak damage if they want to push them up into capture. Oh, circle. Diplomat gets connected by Colossoid, I think. 1.5. Oh, from downtown, Diplomat was spotted there. Kormi Piotr getting wrecked as he crossed to try and get the reset now because we're down at 30 seconds. Papa Powell doesn't have anyone who can actually do anything. Komi Piotr hits him but tracks him. Now he gets the damage in. Dynamo coming around to try and get shots into Piotr, but there's crossfire coming there to prevent Dynamo getting shots into Piotr. Papa Powell has to be careful now. Komi Piotr's in the exact same position we just saw in the previous round where they had the RU harassing the capper. Papa Powell having to back off now. Dynamo trying to give him covering fire. Maraca's going to come up and get a shot into Komi Piotr, though. If he can finish him off, nice shot from Maraca. It's not over yet. The HP, it's even. And there is time. Maraca taking two shots to the face there for that trouble, though. Vesso's now the only one who could potentially do resource. Maraca trying to angle. He does have a good angle there if he just has to be careful with his turret. Connect back into Stefan, perhaps. No, I don't think he has an angle. There is a shooting him unspotted from behind the building. He needs to go a little bit forwards and angle on the next part because backwards is not going to work out for him anymore. Muka taking damage in his E100. Now, Dynamo doesn't have a commander, so he can't spot. Maraca has a dead gunner now as well. Muka's taking damage and having to turn around because Haiba's starting to harass them from the rear. I almost feel like Biku should go clean up. I don't think can. Utopia can do it. They're taking too much damage now, and Kaz and the crew are not taking damage in return. You still have Nexus in full health. You still have Dares in full health, and Dares is the one that's constantly getting all the damage done out right now. Colossor is going to go try and kill Hyba, perhaps. I mean, there's still yeah, a lot of time a here. Massive one shot here from Colossoid. Hyba spotted. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hyba, Hyba senses it. Oh! Good night, Hyba! Also, I took a hit for it's, that. It's not over just yet. I mean, uh, yes, they're down in HP. Yes, that's all good and well. But if they can't reset, if they run out of HE ammo here, Muka just needs to stop taking damage. They all need to stop taking damage because Durs is free farming them at this point. And he's the only one doing the damage. But who are they going to send across? Durs in the FP215B? Are they going to send him across? Stefan looks to be the one coming around the back. Durs is making a move. He's gone forward. He's spotted. Muka wants to get the shot into him. Stefan's driving all the way around, see Dares' is HP, Dares is tracked, he's, he's getting shot at he's on fire. This could be a bit of a misplay if somebody else can get another shot into him, nobody has shots. 
Actually, Papa Power looked like he moved out to get a shot onto Ders as well, and it's another reset, and the base counter continues to go down again. Papa needs to sit safe now for the rest of the game because uh, he cannot make any more peaks and get reset. It. Let's see if Colossoid will predict the play from Stefan coming out, or is he aiming at Diplomat who doesn't have a gunner? It's important what Stefan does here Stefan and what Colossoid does. 1110 damage. Don't he think has that's... gun, he has outline, he can perhaps be luck of the Irish, really, RNG doing that. Um, by keeping him lit like that and pinging him, he lets him know spotted. Now, Colozoid can one-shot Stefan, but Colozoid... Is Colozoid aiming on towards Stefan, though? Stefan, can he high-roll Colozoid? 443, uh, four, yes. Yes, he can. But I don't think Stefan is going to go for it because he's afraid. He's afraid that Colozoid is aiming there, and if he is... He's dead. And that will change things drastically. Utopia might be able to hold on here. They might be able to hold on here. Ooh, Colossoid, he was aiming just towards Stefan now. Another shot there over to Papa Pau and Diplomat gets the kill on him. He hit the Commander Scopola and finished him off. Cap Tactic is gone. Utopia need to do something now. Kasna crew can just hold out for the next two minutes, two and a half minutes unless Utopia can get somebody else in that cap position and try and sit behind it. But the next person up there is Dynamo. He doesn't have vision. He doesn't have the coverage of the E50 um, in his E5. He, needs he to can't get into cap circle because of the wreckage. He needs to push Papa's wreck out of the way first and then he can drive behind it, but he has a Coppola sticking out. Coppola and he has the gun sticking out. But come on, mate. Dynamo, you should know this. Move your gun out of the way. It's a hitbox. Yeah, but if he turns the gun out of the way, it shows the side of his turret. There's, man, his damage is going to be phenomenal this round. Yep. I mean, if only Utopia could have got somebody else. There's a movement coming out here. Bihu and Mukha down the middle road, Daki. Looks like he might try and get a drop onto Nexus. Stefan coming round, but Colosoid, I can't tell if he's aiming that way because we're all seeing it from no, Stefan's no, no. point he's, of view. He's already pushing forward, Colosoid. Stefan could come round and farm damage. If Ders can get spotted, Colosoid could connect with him. Mukha and Bihu looking to try and get spots for their team. Diplomat spotty taken out by Bihu. I still don't think Utopia are doing it. Kasna can just run down the clock and then run away. I mean, Stefan could run away down into to K1, K0. Yeah, but Stefan will probably come from behind and try and shoot Mukha and Bihu in the back of the thirds. It looks like that's happening. Bihu's getting shot at at the moment as Nexus is pushed up into them, into Mukha's face. Nexus still has all the HP. He can do whatever he wants. Great shot there from Stefan taking out Mukha and Utopia. Looks like, sadly, just can't be able to get this tactic working for them as Kasdan crew, with three tanks left against the three tanks of Utopia, are going to run down the clock. There's a minute left as Nexus picks up Bihu. Now only two tanks left from Utopia, both of them on a one-shot. Nexus getting hit there from Dynamo, but not connecting with a pen there, unfortunately. Well, he does, because it's the E5. Colosoid going down now to Stefan, as Ders gets the kill on Dynamo, and Kasna crew are picking up the match and the win. 5-2, to two, Kasna crew. Unbelievable that...